Hi, it's my favorite time of day, the time of day when I get to read a good book to you. Today we're going to read Where the Wild Things Are. It's by Maurice Sendak. This is another one that I think is a classic. And I thought we would read this one today because I know a lot of you are at home and doing your school work at home. And I hope that you're cooperating with your new teachers, your parents, or maybe your grandparents, or somebody you're staying with right now while you're off of school. And I hope you're doing your school work from your other teachers, me, and not giving your parents a hard time about, about it, not being little wild things, right? You're doing your schoolwork and being respectful of whoever's helping you at home. And remember that they're learning too. I'm learning because I had to learn how to put everything online for you guys. They're learning also. They don't know how to do online school. None of us did until now. Well, maybe some of us, but most of us didn't. So we're all getting used to it. So I hope that you're doing your work well for them. I hope that the work you're turning in is good quality work. You know how to do that. And I hope that you are not being little wild things. Go out to recess and be a wild thing. You can have recess in your backyard right now, right? This is one of my favorites. Where the wild things are. Winner of the Caldecott Medal. And you know when they win those medals, that means good books. Do you ever have a wild rumpus? I bet you do. There's time for that. Time for work and a time for wild rumpusing, right? <clears throat> the night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another. His mother called, called him wild thing. And Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. And grew. And grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. How would you like it if your room turned into a forest like that? And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through night and day and in and out of weeks and almost over a year to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. Till Max said, be still, and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. and made him king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. And look at the wild rumpus. Do you ever do that? Have a wild rumpus? I bet you do. Look at Max, he's the king. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around, from far away, across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye and sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day. 
and into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. And that's the end. What do you think happened? Do you think his room really turned into a forest with wild things? Or what do you think happened? Maybe you could talk to an adult around you about what you think really happened in the book. Make some comparisons to your life and Max's. Make some connections. That's always a good thing to do when you're reading. Good readers make connections and they talk about what they're reading also. All right, I hope you liked this book. It's one of my favorites. And third graders, I see you. I see you, Jackson. I see you, Allie. I see you, Ellie. And I hope you're doing a good job at, at your schoolwork at home. I know you are. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. Who have I not said? Lee. Bye, Lee.